Jeannie South Africa and a very, very warm welcome to you. This is Afternoon Express. My name is Jeannie D. Happy Wednesday. I really hope that you are having such a beautiful afternoon so far. Now, there's literally nothing more comforting than wrapping up a Wednesday afternoon with some real good food, excellent company and great conversation. Those are literally my three favorite things in the world. In studio today, we have life coach Colette Merritt, who will be chatting to us about relationships in 2020. My goodness, those are maybe the hardest things to get right so maybe this year will be the year now she'll be giving us really the perfect scoop on the do's and don'ts that we can all learn from then physical therapist Cameron Aberdeen also joins us again for another amazing fitness demo but this time we're going to be focusing on the differences between low GI and high GI and then we are also joined by sister Lorna Peterson she's going to be chatting to us about being sun smart this summer Good afternoon, South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express. My name is Palisa Dembe. And no, do not change the settings on your television screens. You are not seeing double. We have got twins in the kitchen this afternoon. We have got Table here and we've got Lebo. Welcome, Good ladies. Night. Thank you for having us. Yes. <laughs> I feel like I passed the exam. You know, at the end of the year, when you pass your exam, I've got it right. Of course, you ladies are not only bringing all the beautiful positivity into the kitchen, but you're also coming with an amazing recipe. Yes, from our cookbook, from our cookbook. So we're so excited. excited yeah. So what are we whipping up today? Uh, American chili, but with our twist, of yeah. course. Sounds absolutely delicious. If you want to try that at home, simply SMS the keyword Clover to 33650. But from the kitchen over to the lounge. Thank you so much, Paulina. Our first guest for today is Arafat Gatabazi. This athlete is a really prime example of the sheer strength of the human spirit. He joins us now to chat about the trials and tribulations of his journey. Please do connect with us online if you have any questions for Arafat. Tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the official hashtag Afternoon Express or comment on our Facebook page. Arafat, welcome to the show. Thank you for having what me. What an absolute pleasure to meet you because your story is just extraordinary. You know, Normally, some people have got like one cool story and like one amazing thread. Mm. You've just had so many incredible things. It's almost difficult to know where to start. But to take us through the very beginning, you grew up in the DRC and obviously life was, was really tough there and you needed to escape. Mm. How, well, take us to so that. So I was born in a war and I was born in a war camp where I lost yeah. two of my siblings and the province where I come from, there's been war for a very long time. Yeah. And in 2012, I had to escape the country with my sister and my two cousins and we made our way to South Africa to look for our aunt. And when we got in South Africa, we didn't have anywhere to live. Our aunt was living in a shelter and and we ended up in a street children's home. Wow. So it was you and your cousins basically in an orphanage. And what was life like there for you? Uh, life was very difficult. Coming from uh, my mother's house and living in a place where kids have little to no aspiration to a better future in life. Yeah. The only thing they thought about was drugs and the life on the street. So it was uh, very difficult to be in a place where I ended up becoming like them, having negative thoughts and not having anything to look towards to when I wake up here. Yeah. And what, why was South Africa your option, coming from the DRC? Uh, so when we districts? came, we came mainly to look for our aunt that stayed yeah. in South Africa. And that was the goal that we had to, yeah. uh, to reach here. Amazing. Then instead of like allowing those bad thoughts to take hold of you, instead of getting into drugs and crime and all those other things, you then took on a really different path. Mm. You taught yourself to swim. Uh, so at the homestead, the children's home that yeah. uh, I ended up, uh, we had these different programs because the only hope we find them we found them through swimming program yoga and education and wow. swimming was more interesting to me because it was going to be my very first time to be at the swimming pool yeah so when they told me hey Arafat would you like to join swimming I went and it was really amazing being in the water and I found that when I'm in the water I don't have to think about my problems yeah. so it became like therapy to me and I took on further and further and I got an opportunity to swim from Robben Island to Blobeg, and I took that on and trained for it. So now you do, you essentially now do open water swimming. Okay, Cape Town water is freezing. So you've got to be really mentally very strong in order to do it. Take me through the process and the dangers, I suppose, of open well, water swimming. Well, I'll take you through the first, the beginning. So I trained, I couldn't swim. So I learned yeah. how to swim uh, for 11 months, and then I took on my first attempt, yeah. where I got hypothermia, which is the first danger 
I, I oh, got very gosh. cold and I had to be pulled out. The swim is 7.5 kilometers. I swam six kilometers, so I had 1.5 to finish. Wow. And they took me out. And then I had to go back very disappointed because I wanted to show the boys that we can also be able to achieve big things in life. Absolutely. And three weeks later, I went back to finish the swim and I used all the lessons. I went to train in colder waters, rougher waters. Yeah. So I used my failure as my education to go and complete the swim and I completed the swim in three hours yeah. and 33 minutes. Incredible. You're now inspiring other younger boys to do the same. Why do you think it's so important to put that mental challenge, especially in children's heads, especially when kids you know, are living in compromised, very difficult situations? Well, you find it very difficult because society most of the time does not accept uh, kids that live in children's yeah. homes, especially the kids that you see at the robot begging. Yeah. And when you have someone that believes in you, it changes the way you see life. So I had someone, uh, Marion Wagner, she believed that I could be able to achieve things. Yeah. And she gave me the opportunity to learn how to swim and she encouraged me to keep doing it. So when I left the homestead, I thought that I wanted to give back um, to the homestead, but I don't have money to give them. Yeah. Then I, th I thought I would take over the swimming program to share the same thing that Marion gave me to believe in the boys. Yeah. And then I started to make it broader to uh, include other children's home and other kids from different communities to teach yeah. them how to swim. And I found that when you have someone that believes in you, it makes it uh, better for you to think that you can be able to achieve yeah. something. I mean, from a war zone to a children's home, what is your life like now? Right now, it's difficult to describe my life right now because yeah. uh, I'm a web developer right now. Yeah. Uh, I teach swimming private and I have a swimming program where I Amazing. teach underprivileged kids how to swim. And I'm still an open water swimmer. I still do Robin Island swim. I swim around Cape Point, oh. swim around Robin Island, and I do all those swims to do it for charities, to raise funds for different charities. Yeah. Do you know, it is so important to share stories like yours because I can't imagine the tens of children and had the hundreds of children watching this that are really inspired by your story. Yeah. Thank you for, sh for being brave enough to share it with us. Now, we've asked you at home if you've got any questions for Arafat, and Koketso Porsche commented and asked, sometimes giving back to the community can lead your energy a little bit drained especially that there are so many people who are in need how do you remain consistent in what you do well when I look back at the children's home we were about 40 kids and when we said the swimming program I was the only one who came out and did all these things so yeah. if I can be able to reach that one person it makes a huge difference yeah. you cannot change the whole world you can rather focus on that positive uh, thing that you're doing yeah. and then and the people so like now uh, they made a difference to me, so the person I'm making a difference to is going to go and give it on yeah, and pass it on it and forward. pass it on. So that is how I keep consistency and keep exactly. doing it. Yeah. It's amazing. Then Tebojo Precious asked, at what age did you start swimming and what advice can you give someone who wants to learn how to swim? I learned how to swim when I was 17 years old and the only advice I can give you is love the water and keep it consistent. You just need to yeah. keep training and training. You need help from swimming coaches or anyone who can help you with swimming and teach, teach you the basics of swimming because you cannot just go jump in a pool and start swimming. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for being here today. Afternoon Express certainly thank honors you. you as being one of our heroes. Now, join us again after the break for a sweat-breaking fitness demo with the amazing Karen Aberdeen plus an American chili recipe in the kitchen. <laughs>
With your support, we are now able to donate 20,000 pairs of Smart Step school shoes to children in need. Celebrate goodness when you buy a crush. Dial the number on the pack for a chance to win your share of cash prizes and school fees. Crush, share the goodness. Clover Fresh Milk is the number one milk brand in SA. Made with love by Clover. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. And of course, we are now in the kitchen because sadly we missed the Tuesday cook-along because yes. our cricketers were getting cooked instead. <laughs> now, during their stay in the USA, our gorgeous guest chefs, Tebo and Lebo, questioned why American chili had its name but was not actually chili at yeah, all. Yeah. Now, needless to say, <laughs> they spiced things up a bit to make a more delicious version. And with the new clover butter oil, a delicious sunflower and butter oil blend, we guarantee this American chili is is one that will remain in your recipe repertoire. Now, to get this recipe, SMS the keyword clover to 33650. SMS is a one round 50 each. Free SMSs do not apply. Do you know that I've always wondered that? Because in like every single good American movie, <laughs> yeah, they yeah. say, mm, I'm going to go get some chili. And, and then, then you, you think, taste what are they actually <laughs> eating? And then it's just mince. Yes, with some beans. Yeah. But it's not hot. No, yeah. we need to make yeah. it hot. Like yes. chili so we're adding there. some heat to it today. Yeah. That's, you see, yes. this is why I love you too. <laughs> And of course, all of these recipes can be found in your cookbook? Yes. Okay, including this chili recipe? Yes. Also, of course, but SMS us and you can yes. visit our website yeah. for this chili <laughs> recipe as well. Okay, teach me, ladies, because okay. I love a good chili. Yes. Good chili, you have to start with some onion yes. and some garlic. So I'm just sauteing some, some onion and I'm using the bucho. Yes, of Because course. this is fantastic, a combination of butter and oil. No, it's amazing because yeah. it doesn't you need burn it in the, the kitchen. Yeah. yeah. So I'm it just going to add a bit in here. Yeah. And then I'm just going to brown my mint as yeah. well. Yeah. So we're going to add some garlic as well. Don't forget yes. the garlic. I'm going to add some garlic because this is our base. Yeah. When is the best time to put in garlic? Because sometimes I put it in too early and it tends and it to burn. Burns. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So let your, let your onions cook yeah. first and then add the garlic. Yeah. Okay. And then you can throw them in with the spices as well. I'm okay, just going to turn up the heat a little bit and I'm going to add my mint. Yeah. I need it nice and brown. Because yes. all the flavor comes out, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Especially like when you're making stew, you brown your meat first before you, you put in your vegetables so that yeah. that caramelization can come through. Yeah. yeah. So and I'm it just will bring out the nice sweetness as well. Yes. Yeah. So I'm just going to add this in. Yeah. And then we're going to add some spices. Yes, you need spices. So because we're spicing things up, Girl, we adding... I'm dying to see the spices <laughs> that are making it to this little chili. So we're adding pot. some paprika. Yeah, lots. Lots. Yeah. Uh, as little though as much as, as but much yeah, like, no, paprika, but yes. I don't find paprika actually no. that burning. Yeah, no, not at so all. So I like the, the It's a great taste flavor. Of paprika, yeah. Then we're gonna of course add some cumin and coriander. Yes. yes. Add some spice in our lives. Yeah. Yes. Look great at you. So spicy. <laughs> <laughs> and we are adding the, the spices in early because you want them to cook up. Yeah. You don't wanna taste the raw, raw spices, spices when you eat. When you well, eat. that is a thing. You yeah. know what I've actually noticed? Whenever I make a chili con carne or a curry, it's always better the next day, actually. Yeah, Don't you is. find that as yeah. well at home? Because they actually do get to cook in a the little spices bit more. more. Yeah. Just, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm adding my raw chili as well. Yes. So you know, if you want it a bit more hot, you just leave the seeds, seeds in. in. Yeah. If okay. you don't want it too hot, just leave the seeds out. Okay. And I'm also going to add my flour. That's going to okay, be our thickening flour. agent. That's going to be our thickening agent yes. when we add the stock and the um, canned tomatoes. Yeah, and okay. I make your um, chili nice and thick. Yeah. So I'm adding it also in the earlier stages because I want it to cook out as well. Because yeah. you don't want to taste flour in your food when no. you're eating. Agreed. Yeah. 100%. And next, I'm adding my beautiful tomato paste. I love tomato paste. Yes. I lived on that stuff at university. <laughs> tomato paste, two-minute noodles and parmesan cheese. Oh, that was us. <laughs> but we were popcorn. Yeah, apples. And, yeah, popcorn and apples. Oh, delicious. Yeah. You can see boarding school girls. <laughs> <laughs> That's next. Um, and we're going to add some herbs. Yes, some thyme. Okay, I know leaf. that a bay leaf you throw in whole yes. and then you sometimes take it out at the yes. end. Yes. But what happens if you make them just really small? No, you need to throw it in whole because it stays quite, it doesn't soften. Yeah. It won't soften and yeah. you can... It just it, flavors okay. you. It just okay. flavors Can I throw a bay leaf in? Yes, please. Just two or three. So oh, as you can see in the kitchen, if we're not in flavor. the pot together, yeah. we're micromanaging each other. Yes. This oh, is I how it goes that. in the kitchen. She's telling me what to do now. <laughs> I'm reminding her two, beds are always, two heads are always better yeah. than one. Oh, definitely. <laughs> my little, what's it, is it a cyclops? <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm going to add my liquid. 
Yeah, which, which is, is what? Which is some tom some chopped tomatoes. Okay. We love canned tomatoes. We love it's canned so tomatoes. It's so convenient. Yeah. And yeah. I'm also going to add my stock as well. Do you know that tomatoes and potatoes are just my favorite things in the whole yeah. world? Because they're just so versatile. I mean, all the things you can do with the tomato, all the yes. things you can do with the, the potato. potato. Ah, I mean, it. it's just endless. So obviously, you're going to let this cook longer. Yeah. yeah. Then I mean, we're going to add some. Oh, we're going to add some sugar. This yes. cuts down the acidity of the tomatoes. Yes. So this will just balance the flavors out. So you know what I would have actually have done? Mm -hmm. Instead of the, that, like, thick tomato paste, yeah. I would have gone with the tomato sauce because it oh. already has oh, the sugar oh, in it. Oh, it has the sugar so, in it. Yeah, and it's yeah. delicious. I have yeah. tomato sauce. That's everything. very convenient as well. Okay, so that's cooking up. Yeah. Yes. Boinkies. And this goes in last. Amazing. So while she does that, I'm going to make our little salsa. So you can serve it with rice. Yeah. I'm making, like, a little evo salsa. Yeah. So I'm just going to take our evil. We love evil. We, we love evil. Evo. Evo. Obsessed. Obsessed. So I'm just going to chop this up. This is super easy. Yeah. And you always put, you always want to put um, lemons on your evo so it doesn't go brown. Yeah. I put lemon on everything. Yes. Just a little note. When you are, even if you're having a glass of water, because you've got to have your eight glasses of water a day, I recommend yes. you go and yes. get one now. <laughs> even if you just put one little slice of lemon or one little squeeze of lemon, it is already a hundred times more hydrating for you than just regular water. So that's how good it is. Wow, that's a very you. good piece of information. Yeah, I thank know. Well, you. look at my glowy skin. <laughs> I mean, I'm almost 107. You should see her laugh. She's gorgeous. Yeah. She's prettier <laughs> than she looks. Oh, <laughs> she would have been a God, I hope so. <laughs> okay, true. so lemon, avo, yeah. coriander. And I'm going to add there. some chili. And that's it. Chili in our life. That's it. I'm adding chili in the yeah. Girl, and then in the end, you, you just want to adjust your seasoning. Just taste your food and just add some salt and pepper. Beautiful. Yes. Look how good that looks. And that's, that's it. How easy. This is definitely a standard winter dish for me. I'm obsessed. I want this for dinner every single night. <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies. You're most amazing. Welcome. Remember to SMS the keyword Clover to double three six five zero to get this yummy chili recipe sent to your device. Here's a little reminder in case you missed any of these amazing steps. Fresh Milk is the number one milk brand in SA. Made with love by Clover. Physical therapist and fitness trainer Cameron Aberdeen is back in studio today. Now he's going to tell us all about the foods that we should start, stop and continue eating. Especially if we want to, you know, get back into shape and look cute and whatnot. So I'm very excited about this conversation. Wednesdays are one of my favorite days of the week. Because you all know I'm trying to get cute and Cameron, you're here to help me. You know, mind, body, soul and more importantly, like what we just saw in the kitchen. So how does sugars affect our weight loss and weight gain? Well, when we're talking about sugars and in terms of how it affects weight loss, mm. directly related to hormones. Now, hormones such as insulin, which are commonly spoken about, mm. high intakes of sugar cause spikes in insulin, which apart from the fact that it could lead to type 2 diabetes, mm. um, also causes an inhibition of other hormones that help with lipolysis, which is basically the ability your body has to burn and break down fat as an energy source. Mm. Um, that being said, an increase in insulin prevents your body from correctly using its leptin hormone. Now, okay. leptin is another hormone that's associated with that feeling of satiety. So mm. if we eat something, that point when we feel full, that the is itis. leptin. <laughs> the itis. Leptin is the hormone that tells us we've had enough. Okay. And if obviously if that is inhibited from doing its job, it means we're going to eat a little bit more than what we should be, mm. therefore gain a little bit more weight over time if that's what we're constantly doing. Mm. Now, a third ho hormone that we could touch on would be dopamine. Yeah. Now, we all know sugar is 
addictive, okay? I mean, you ain't got to tell me twice. <laughs> Just like a drug. Yeah. Taking a lot of sugar in creates a feeling of satisfaction. Mm. And um, this is why a lot of people run to it, so that they can get that little break from reality and enjoy mm. themselves, even though it is temporary. It's kind of like a, a different form of emotional eating. Basically, and it's caused by stress, anxiety. If you've had a rough day, a lot of people just run and find something to snack on. Chocolate! <laughs> and that's what we're trying to avoid. Okay, so once you've, now that you've broken it down and the effects it has on our body, then what food should we be focusing on that has the good sugars, the sugars that we want, that we need? Which food group do you think um, is, is quite strong in that. Well, if we're talking sugars, we're talking carbohydrates. And mm. I think a good point to touch on would be fruits. Mm. So a lot of people assume that, you know, fruits have a lot of sugars or fruits are healthy, we can have as much as we want. Yeah. There are certain fruits that we want to avoid if we are trying to lose weight. Because in terms of a V glycemic index, some fruits have a higher GI, some fruits have a low GI. Okay. High GI fruits, as an example, would be watermelon, kiwis, mangoes, mm -hmm. things like that. Very tasty. Obviously, we love watermelon on a nice hot day. Love that, yeah. A little bit higher in sugar. Okay. Uh, things like your... And grapes. Grapes as well, correct. A lot of grape juice as well, high in sugar. Mm -hmm. um, your low GI fruits, something that you would want to lean towards if you are trying to lose weight, would be your citrus fruits, such mm. as grapefruit. Um, very, very good, full of vitamins, obviously a lot of vitamin C. Okay. Um, berries, high in antioxidants, such as blueberries, mm. strawberries, etc. And then lastly, I would suggest bananas, because contrary yeah. to popular belief, bananas are actually considered low GI. They kind of fit in the middle. So I'm, I've got a love-hate relationship with bananas and I don't know what to believe. A lot of people say you can't have bananas after a certain time of the day. Sometimes people say that bananas are high in potassium so it's good when you want to exercise. And So how, what, what, how do we properly enjoy bananas and is there do's, are there do's and don'ts? I think the timing of what you eat should always be directly related to whether or not you eat, you need the energy. Okay. Now, whatever you're eating, say for example, you are going to smash a workout at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. It's not a sin to have a banana before that, maybe okay. like 30 minutes before that. That's okay. Mm -hmm. If you're going straight to bed and you're eating anything that's high in calories, obviously your body's going to store that. We don't want that. Okay. With that said and done, I, I mean, I definitely feel like what... They say your diet is 80% of your weight loss journey and getting healthy and fit and whatever. But you also actually need to put in the work and do the work as we're about to. And you have, um, two weeks ago, we started this journey with you. Fitness, new year, new me. And um, here's the second installation. And I just kind of want to go through a beginner, intermediate, and of course, difficult workout that our viewers can try at home to help get into shape. Yeah, so what we will be demonstrating today will be a pike. Very um, commonly used exercise, similar to a plank, but with a few variations for beginner, intermediate, Let's and advanced. Go. I'm ready for it. Okay. So We've got our mats down. Starting off, we're going to get into a basic plank position. Now, this would be an, a beginner phase of this exercise. Okay. So, coming down, try not to arch the back, okay. flat back, and lifting the hips up towards the ceiling and drop back down. Now again, I like to do repetitions as opposed to just a static hold, making these exercises dynamic. Love that. Taking it up to a secondary position for someone who is a little bit more intermediate. Okay. We can come up into a full push up and in that lifting your bum up nice and high, heels towards the floor, gives your hamstrings and your calves a good stretch mm -hmm. all the way back down. And then do we have to make sure that our heels touch the floor when you lean back? Not necessarily, a lot of people aren't that flexible. So obviously you can use your discretion and stop wherever you feel a good stretch. Okay. I mean, this is definitely where I stop. This is, I've reached my uh, bus stop when it comes to this exercise. But if people are a lot more fitter than I am and they wanna go for that top tier, more difficult exercise, how does that look? Well, we would then go into that same push-up position. Okay. And incorporating that same movement, what we would then do is add in Across oh, wow. That. Reaching across, coming back to your flat back, try not to arch. And you just keep that repetition going. And that's what they would do. Definitely making sure that every single muscle group is engaged, every single muscle group is doing as it should, and of course, helping our lives get a lot easier and more flexible and, you know, adding the energy that we need. Thank you so much, Cameron. Oh, Always coming with the gems. Now make sure you tune in after the break as we talk all things relationships in 2020. <laughs>
With your support, we are now able to donate 20,000 pairs of Smart Step school shoes to children in need. Celebrate goodness when you buy a crush. Dial the number on the pack for a chance to win your share of cash prizes and school fees. Crush, share the goodness. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, children represent the future. And if we can add a little dose of goodness to their lives, then it really does have the power to transform a better society. Now, goodness has been at the core of everything that Clover Crush stands for, above and beyond its great tasting juice. Oh, absolutely delicious. Now, the return of their Crush Goodness campaign is starting to show that spreading goodness every day really does have the power to change the world for the better. Yeah, and here's a hit, little highlight of the goodness crew spreading all the goodness at Rudaport Primary School. <laughs> Rudaport Primary, the Clover hashtag crush goodness campaign to give each child a new pair of school shoes was led by the brand's marketing manager, Miantha Roo. It really warms our hearts this morning to see these smiles on these faces and uh, what a great way to start 2020. No one was left out. Every child received a brand new pair of Smart Step school shoes, made to last. It's a school shoe made by the South African people for the South African children. So that already automatically qualifies the brand as a perfect shoe for the South African landscape. Keen to help share the goodness as far and wide as they can, the campaign benefited greatly from the influence of stars like Dineo Langa. 
am really, really impressed consistently when I hear about the different strides this campaign has pulled off. I mean, for innovations like this to be continuous, it takes a lot. So for Clover Crush to have continued providing school children with school shoes, they're trying to take it to so many different levels um, and so many different other areas means that, you know, this is a brand that cares. It said that the nation can be judged as to how you treat children, yes. and this this gesture says a, a mountain of, of uh, gratitude from from us as as a school. They come from disadvantaged homes, backgrounds, and this gesture says to them that they are special, and and this makes a big difference in their attitude towards uh, learning and schooling. You think this is an easy thing for any child to have. You take it for granted. And once you find out that some of them don't have that level of privilege or access, you go, absolutely, let's do our best to put our best foot forward to get them the resources they need to be the best pupils ever, to have a great starting foundation. Share a little goodness with a child and the effects can last a lifetime. Join the hashtag Crush Goodness and be there to grow the goodness culture across South Africa. Oh my goodness, such feel-good stories. Now, without you, this wouldn't have been possible. So, um, so catch the Goodness crew this week as they hashtag share the goodness at schools in the Free State and KZN, where learners will receive a brand new pair of Smart Step school shoes. Amazing. I love new shoes. <laughs> now, remember that you could still ch stand the chance to win your share of 250,000 Rand in cash and one of five school fees valued up to 50,000 Rand each. So get your favorite crush today and enter with the details on the pack. With your support, we are now able to donate 20,000 pairs of Smart Step school shoes to children in need. Celebrate goodness when you buy a crush. Dial the number on the pack for a chance to win your share of cash prizes and school fees. Crush, share the goodness. Oh, now, one of my favorite topics of conversation ever. For as long as we have been on Earth, humans have been trying to figure out the trick behind healthy relationships. Impossible. <laughs> now, life coach Colette Merritt um, joins us today to break down some healthy relationship building concepts. Now, you have got quite the task on your hands <laughs> because it is a new year, of course, and some of us want to restore old relationships, renew, and, of course, find love. <clears throat> and understand Alisa. why men are from Mars and women are from Venus and why it's so hard to meet and find and keep the perfect relationship. Absolutely, and it can be a bit of a challenge. <laughs> yeah, I know. So some, some really quick tips which are really helpful is the first thing is yeah. that in the new 2020, mm. we are looking for people who partner us, right? We're looking for people who join us in what we're doing every day, who support the roles that we take in our workplace, yeah. who fulfill that role completely as a partner, mm -hmm. who role model great parenting mm -hmm. to future children that we might have, we might not have them yet, right? So that's one of the, the main things that we want to do. We want partners in our relationship, and that's every sense of that word. Do you think that relationships are getting tougher because roles are no longer clearly defined in True. the home, where, I mean, a woman don't want to be, you know, sitting barefoot and pregnant anymore, doing the dishes and cooking, mm -hmm. and men aren't earning maybe as much as women are anymore, so there are becoming certain conflicts. How do we patch that up and then still have romance? <laughs> Communication. Yeah. You can really only just talk it through and be clear about what you want in your relationship. You know, when you're joining, I mean, you two are great, both great success for women, right? Yeah. When you're meeting people, you want to meet someone who's an equal. That doesn't necessarily mean you both need to meet, meet power people. You yeah. have to... I mean, that would be nice too. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but, but you might be looking for somebody who, while you go out to work, mm. who yes. chooses to stay home. and is oh, holding it down. I'm trying to stay away from those. Okay, well, and you know, <laughs> House husbands, no ways. <laughs> and that's a conversation, right? Yeah. That's the conversation that you go into relationships having. Yeah. You don't do it on date one. <laughs> You kind yeah. of, you know, ease into the process and communication is really the only way to do that. But do you think through mm. social media, a lot of people have lost those interpersonal skills? Without a doubt. Do you think men, and I'm not blaming all men because trust me, yeah. I love men, but do you think people have lost that tact, you know, that, that energy yeah. to be charming, to be chivalrous, to woo a woman? Because now to swipe left, swipe right. Double tap. Like, like double tap and slide into a DM and oh, I've got her. And I want to add another element <laughs> and that instant gratification. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah. you know, a lot of people don't want to see it through and they get bored and move on because yeah. the next person is a swipe and away. And didn't send nudes. Yeah, <laughs> I so mean... Go, relationship <laughs> over. <laughs> well, I would definitely have to say you'd have to do it in person, right? So yeah. social media has its place and the electronic age is fantastic and I love tech, <laughs> but I'm not sure we're finding all of Mr. Right when we're swiping left or right. No. Right, that's my personal opinion. I know a couple of people argue with me quite vehemently and say, no, if for heaven's sakes they met their best friend on whatever, the, yeah. the app is of the week. And, um, but it's, it's that getting, but going back to that personal communication, getting to know somebody, yeah. Yeah. getting to know them on a real personal level as yeah. opposed to what you're showing on social media, yeah. okay. which is not necessarily all of us. So you're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. So what, give us three quick top tips, how to, to find and groom and grow the perfect relationship. So this one was a real surprise with me when I was doing a bit of research mm. from a perspective of there's a new, there's a university in Europe who's just done a study. They canvassed 68,000 people over 180 countries. And guess what was the top thing that came out right. in relationships? What people are seeking in relationships? Uh, to be understood. I like it. To it's be close. heard. Close. Except uh, loved. Kindness. Oh, kindness is a top one on my list. Kindness is kindness. right up there. Mm. So kindness is number one. If you demonstrate it and if mm. you be it, you will attract yeah. it, right, oh, wow. without a doubt. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, it's, it's, it's the old adage, what you put out, you get back. Mm. To be with a great partner, yeah. you have to be a great partner. Oh. Like and there that. is the, where you're doing the work on you. So that's yeah. number two that I would say is do the work on you heal hurts from the past, find the stuff that's hurt you before and do the work. Yeah. You know, uh, emotionally healthy is the new sexy. I mean, oh, I, I'm, I'm definitely triggered already. And what is the final top tip? I'm <laughs> definitely so triggered. Pally and I are literally sitting here on edge. <laughs> Absolutely, do the work. And then the easy one, which is communication. Yeah. Mm. So if you're being kind, if you're doing the work to heal yourself, and that doesn't mean we have to come to every relationship 100%. We don't. We're humans, mm. right? Yeah. But be prepared to do the work. Yeah. We can come with a bit of a hole, but we don't need to find someone to fix us. No, because yeah. chances are we're all a little bit damaged in one way or the other. Without a doubt. And you know, if you are confused, he's not interested. If, it, like, if, if a man is yeah. into you, you'll know about it. If yeah. you're confused, Preach it. then yeah. Hallelujah. Then no. <laughs> Next. <laughs> yes, that is so crucial. Yeah. So finally, yeah. just to wrap it up, moving into 2020, we want healthy relationships. We mm. want loving relationships. Mm. I mean, any advice? <laughs> I would have to say, uh, do the work. That's a big key for me because we can't come to a relationship wounded. Yeah. I mean, sometimes we do come into a relationship when that has already happened yeah. mm. and it's about doing the work and making sure that we get healthy so that we can bring that to a partnership. Um, without a doubt, communication. Learn what your love language is. Learn what yours is to receive. Crucial. And what if what we are all the love language? I think I read, read that yeah. language of love and I was all yeah. of them. But no, but gee, <laughs> but definitely, have... there has to, but there has to be a hierarchy of That's some sort. Right. Is it yeah, gifts, yeah, is it is. service, there is, is. it affection? Yeah. Yeah, I have three, so I'm oh, good. all over that one. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. I thought I was just But my partner lost. knows, my husband <laughs> knows, you know, he knows what number yeah. one is. And, yes. and so, and we speak that language to each other because okay, I know good. what his is as well. Stunning. Well, thank you so much for coming through and spreading these gems. I'm sure everyone at home now feels a lot more better and confident going into every relationship in 2020. Totally. Now, we all know that February is one of the hottest months of the year. So join us after the break as Sister Lorna Peterson shows us how we to be sun smart. <laughs>
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, the build-up to the SunMet 2020 is quite literally overflowing. Now, let's take a look at the luxurious Horses Spa Day in preparation for Africa's richest race day. The SunMet 2020 promises to be one of the grandest events of the summer season. But today, Afternoon Express was invited out to the SunMet Horses Spa Day. International always making sure that humans have the right level of hospitality. But today it's all about the horses. Yeah. Gareth, how important is pampering the horses pre-race day? Well, I tell you what, this is such a great setting. And in speaking to one of the trainers, they said that this is the horses' day off. <laughs> so just like humans, you need to have a day off. So they come to the beach, they feel the sand between their hooves, they go into the water, they are so genuinely relaxed. But you know what? It is lovely to see the horses out of that racing or that training environment. Justin, you are in charge of making sure that these horses, these hybrid machines are performing at their optimum on the day. What kind of work goes into getting the horses ready? Well, look, it is a professional job where just remember the, the value of these uh, beautiful race horses is extremely high. So extremely professional, but at the same time, uh, loving the job that I have, that they come first. Uh, the well-being of our race horses is paramount and it's just I, I couldn't ask for any other better job in the world. Eli, not shying away from the colour as a fashion designer, what's your interpretation of the theme African Luxury Visionaries? Oh well, like it's actually this. Um, um, the theme is quite actually amazing. I've, it's one of my um, like what the brand stands for. Uh, my brand is all about bravery. Um, you know, um, visionaries, of course, from like you know um, creating everything from scratch and giving it a life from nothing. So um, this theme actually fits in with the brand. And um, this year we just want to show the African bravery, um, you know, visionary, and also um, bring the luxury like you know within that African has it in them the whole you know loyal you know loyalty and you know the kingness and queenness that we have within us so yeah that's what I wanted to bring into the you know the, the themes Sasha today might be the horses spa day but in true sun mid style it can't always be about the horses we got to add some fashion darling as we have <laughs> as we certainly have I'm definitely wearing this number by Eli Gold mm. from the Masamara collection and can you see the vision out here? Beautiful! Work it, Queen! <laughs> With the theme in 2020 being African luxury visionaries, we're all about being authentic, being real. How are you carrying out the theme this year, all things fashion? You know, I haven't attended a SunMet before, but what I can say is that fashion is really about, a, it's, it's more about self-expression. It's an extension of who you are, so be very much who you are. Yeah. I think that's the most important thing. So much fun this morning from the fashion to the horses on the beach and that oh so scrumptious brunch. This is only but a taste of everything to expect at the SunMet 2020. Well, it's all happening this Sunday at the SunMet, and of course, we will be there doing a live broadcast for you. Oh, it's gonna be so much fun! And my That's outfit, <laughs> but you know what? My outfit, I need to be prepared sunblock, stay out of the sun, and of course, keep safe yes. the skin, honey, and the melanin and popping. Speaking of which, although the Sun Smart Skin Cancer Awareness Month runs from December, January, we need to realize that uh, we can contract skin cancer even when. It isn't summer all around. Now, Sister Lorna Peterson joins us today to chat about this really important topic. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for Can having me. Can I tell me? you, one of my very, very, very best friends is a plastic surgeon, and he says there's only one thing that ages you as a woman, mm. the sun. Yes. He said it is, if people knew how bad it was, you would actually drive with gloves. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Is it really that intense? The thing is, is we are only concentrate on summer. Yeah. Yeah. December, January, February also becomes very hot these days yes. now with the climate change, and we forget about the sun is still there right through the year. Mm. Even in winter, you have to be sun smart. Absolutely. Because the sun is always there. Exactly. And after fifty, even in winter. Even in yes. winter, even absolutely. In winter. Yes. And a lot of the time, a lot of people also put it in, even indoors, different lights and and the the the, the rays coming in from winter windows can also affect you and that's where Sun Smart comes in yes. as an organization. What is the Cancer Awareness Month about? Cancer, uh, Cancer Awareness Month is about looking after your skin because the sun is very hot these days with the climate change and it can do a lot of damage to your skin. 
Mm. So I know that it takes one bad sunburn in order to cause sun, uh, skin cancer. Do you know that? Wow, Just nice. one bad burn can potentially cause skin okay. cancer. For people who are a little bit worried, what are the kind of marks and textures and colors that people should be looking out for if they are a little bit worried? Let's talk about, we um, talk about looking after your skin yeah. all the time. Yeah. A monthly thing, it must be done. Yeah. Because these things can come up all the time, especially if you've got cancer, uh, skin cancer in the family. Yeah. Those marks can go from um, smooth to ragged to uh, bleeding. There is four things that a person must watch mm -hmm. when you look at your skin every month. We talk about the ABCDE of the skin. A stands for asymmetric. That means the, uh, the, if there's a, a mole on your wherever that is, it must be smooth. It must be not. If you look at it, the two halves must not look different. Oh. The B is for the borders. The borders must be smooth and it must not be ragged. That means if it is ragged, that is a problem. The C is for the color. It can have any other color except red and uh, blue. Okay. Those are abnormal colors. The colors that we look for that is normal is black and brown. Mm. Uh, although you can get all kinds of colors. Yeah. The D stands for the diameter. That means it must, if there is a, a lesion, it must be larger than six millimeters. Okay. Evolu uh, uh, evolving is all of them. The skin is ragged, it's not smooth, it can bleed at time, it, uh, the color can be from red to any other color. Mm. Uh, the size must be more than uh, uh, six, yeah. six uh, millimeters. millimeters. Yes, six millimeters. This is very scary news, but of course, education and awareness and spreading the news is what's important so that we know exactly what to look out for. So thank you so much for that, sister. Moving um, throughout the year, what are your top tips as skin care um, is so important? Uh, the most important things is these days, uh, December, January, you must be aware of that sun that is so uh, uh, hot. Stay out of the sun, that is direct sunlight. Mm. The other one is if you have to go out, like to the beach or wherever you're going to, because a person, the sun mm. is there all the time, even if you're not going to the, you don't have to, be to uh, go to the beach. Mm. You cover yourself properly with UV protective clothing. Okay. A hat, very good with a brim, uh, a broad br uh, a brim. Mm. Uh, protective clothing, the swimsuit, you get special UV protective clothing. Yeah, rash vests are very yes. good. Oh, wow. Especially on children. Especially on children. Children have to be in those, especially in South Africa. Oh. Yes. Mm. The hottest time is 10 till three in the afternoon, and that is the time that a person must be, if you are outside, look very good after your skin. Mm -hmm. You've got the sunscreen that you must put on. If you use the three to 50, then that is a good one. Okay. But it must be reapplied all the time. That doesn't mean if you applied it once. In the morning. <laughs> in the morning before you go out, th that is enough. And the other thing is it must be applied at least 20 minutes before you go into the sun. Okay. okay. Oh, I heard it was two hours. Okay, 20 minutes. 20 minutes before. before. Okay. But if you've been in the, uh, in the water or you've been on the, on the, uh, in the sun, you have to reapply. If it's a 50, mm. then you re have to reapply it at Doesn't least Doesn't it mean that if it's, if it's factor 20, it means apply every 20 more, minutes? More often. Factor 50 means apply every 50, 50 minutes. More, yes, more I often. Know. More often. Yeah. If it's a 50, you apply it more often. But if it's a 20, then uh, uh, I mean a 50 is uh, like four. At yeah. least four hours. Yeah. But okay. the, the less it is, it's uh, more, more, regular. more regular, yes. Thank you very much for keeping our sun smart. We've definitely learned so much today. Stay out of the sun and stay sun wise. Now, join us one more time after the break as we bring all of our amazing guests back together for a final thought. Just relax, it's just us two. Just do you.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. And of course, we are back on the couch with our hero, underwater open, sw <laughs> open water, underwater swimmer, <laughs> and of course, philanthropist, Arafat Gatabazi. Welcome back to, to Afternoon Express. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. You've yeah. done such extraordinary, extraordinary stuff. And not only that, he's such an inspiration to the community and everyone yeah. around you. I mean, constantly giving back and being so selfless. Now, that can't be easy. Um, a lot of the time, giving back, you feed into yourself, but a lot of the time it also kind of chips away and it can get really exhausting. And a viewer on social media wanted to know from you, how do you keep up the hard work? How do you keep a sunny disposition? How do you keep motivated and inspired to continuously help? Well, I guess when you come in, my, in the position that I was in, I think it becomes easier for you to help because um, seeing where I come from and to where I am now is because of the people that helped me. So when um, I help people, that is, the, um, mm. that's, that is where it's coming from. So that's why I won't say that uh, it's taking a lot out of me or I'm feeling tired of helping people or I'm feeling exhausted of uh, helping people. I find joy in helping people. Wow. Okay, but now I want to know, don't you get scared when you're swimming in the, in the, like in the ocean, like sharks and... Like, it's dangerous out there. Like, well, wildlife, hello. Like, no, but I've been shark cage diving. Like, those things are lethal yeah. and they are enormous. Like, are you and well, you will die. <laughs> no, but there's definitely sharks somewhere between Robben Island and mm. Blobe. So it depends what... What you want. In the beginning, I was scared. Yeah. But right now, when I go in the, in the ocean, I'm curious to see what is in the ocean. Wow. So I've got a different mindset to what a lot of people have uh, about the ocean. When I think about the ocean, I think about dolphins because when we swim, yeah. dolphins come. We've yeah. never seen sharks. So yeah. those are the things that uh, keep me going back in the yeah. ocean. And yeah. That is beautiful. Yeah. Indeed. That is really stunning. Doing incredible work not only within yourself to improve yourself, but to improve mm. the communities mm. around you and the ecosystem around yeah. you. Thank you so much for coming on to Afternoon you. Express you and sharing Pleasure your inspiration. You. Oh, yes. Yeah. You now, tomorrow we're going to be catching up with the one, the oh. only Saki. She's got this cutest little one, little oh. baby girl, four months old. I hope she's so going to bring the baby. I want to see the yeah. baby. Saki, bring the baby. Thank you so much for tuning in. Good night and God bless, but we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Afternoon Express, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.